This is Hexo, our latest creation. It supports ATX motherboards with all the hottest hardware, literally. And it's only cooled by two fans. It's named after my friend Hexo, who is the greatest healer I've ever grouped with in 19 years of playing World of Warcraft. The PC is built for him and inspired by him, because like his healing, its cooling is very efficient. Here's how it all works. Two fans suck air through the base of the chassis, which is elevated through a machine stand. Air is also pulled in through the bottom vents in the side panels. Then air moves up past the pump and power supply to the first hot component, the chipset heatsink. Then it moves through the RAM heatsinks in the backside of the GPU. In this build, the 3090 has an active backplate, but <laughs> other cards aren't so lucky. Then it moves through the chokes and the VRM heatsink and through the Noctua Sterox fans. Finally, air passes through the enormously thick radiator and smoothly out the top. Now let's take a closer look at the parts that make all this work. Here's the machine stand. It's made out of chonky aluminum, machined to perfection, then sandblasted and anodized. It's insanely heavy base plate, which is strong enough to support the weight of the system on a few felt pads without any flex. It's finished in a fancy ceramic coating called Cerakote, which is very thin and heat and scratch resistant. The chassis frame is a hybrid stainless steel and aluminum. Stainless steel is used for the parts requiring stiffness and thread resilience, and aluminum is used for the parts that can be lightweight. The strength and rigidity of the chassis means that an EATX power supply can be face mounted with no support and even be a load bearing structure for the massively heavy GPU. GPUs don't get heavier than this 3090 Strix. It has a full coverage nickel plated copper water block on both sides of the card. Moving along the PC components and spanning the length of the case is the acrylic reservoir. Carved from two 12mm thick slabs of acrylic glass, this thing is heavy as it is beautiful. It's a primary aesthetic of the build and subtly reveals the mystery of what's inside. Towards the top of the system hangs the critical component of the build, the AlphaCool <laughs> Nexos Monster Radiator 240. Conventional wisdom holds that you want as much fin density as possible so you can have a thinner radiator, but for my design to work, I need a low restriction, massive surface area radiator. This fits the bill. Cooling the heat exchanger are the two Noctua NFA12 Chromax fans. They have a high static pressure, and they sound amazing even at full bore. To further reduce noise and increase performance, we designed a plenum spacer. It's 3D printed from nylon and dyed jet black. Lee Heat is the vendor I used for several runs of Skyreach cases, and their quality is fantastic. The riser for this build is totally custom, and one of their first PCI 4.0 risers, which is actually certified. I asked them about vertical mounts, and they supplied the one I'm using for the build. It's sturdy steel, and I recommend it highly. There are many more components to this build, but let's switch over to the tools that I used to design it. The Zometry plugin for 360, and Eric. Not everybody has access to an Eric. I picked this one up on a paid safari tour with Willy Wonka. He helped me with the critical design components, some of the engineering work. Stupid Josh. Noctua fans. I'm Josh, and I love Noctua. Brown and cream is the best. What's wrong with you, Eric? Why don't you like him? Show you. I'm gonna show you, Josh. I am Eric, and I am being ethic, <clears throat> and I am being treated ethically and humanely. I do not wish to return home to my family. I love working with Josh at our fair trade company, NFC Systems. 
Did it really kill him to smile a little bit? <laughs> I'm all smiles because this is the part of the video for the Fusion 360 Zometry plug. It's a plug plug-in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Zometry sponsored our parts, but before you fast forward, I want to show you something that I use every time I'm prepping to machine a new part. I have this impossible part loaded in the plugin, and yeah, it gives us a ballpark quote, but look down here. It's giving us warnings to review that the part might be expensive or impossible to machine. Tool access. It's saying that the tool, think of it like a drill bit, can't get inside this pocket. I know that, you know that, and apparently the Zometry plugin does too. But if you're just starting to learn how to cam or get parts made, this plugin can really help you out. Now, if you're a little bit more experienced, it still is useful. Here's another simple but real world example. It's giving us a warning that there are sharp inside corners. Remember the tool or end mill is like a drill bit, it's round. If it comes in here, it's gonna cut a round shape. So we just need to be prepared to get an email from one of Zometry's engineers asking us if we're okay with that, because that's what's gonna happen. Or we can just fix it now. Run the plugin again, and voila, warning is gone. I use this tool to help me design lower cost parts and to catch mistakes, regardless if I'm gonna use Zometry to get the part made or not. Sometimes they can be really expensive. But other times, it's really great. If I switch back to their website to get a quote, I have more options, and I'm willing to wait eight days <laughs> for 170 bucks for a double-sided aluminum part. Especially in this size, it's really competitive. Zometry does it all, too, which is what I'm showcasing in this video. It's truly a one-stop shop, and I've tested their customer service out before making this video, and I can say that it's truly top-notch. They take care of you if there's a problem. So in exchange for that little promo, Hexo was going to get the parts that he needed made. The second big challenge of this project were the parts that we messed up. I know, we're not perfect, big surprise. There were a lot of little design boo-boos we were able to cleanly fix, like offset mounting holes, but the biggest issue was the reservoir. We didn't give it enough clearance at the top and the bottom, so that when the screws were installed for the side braces, it just wouldn't fit. It was that close. So I had to take a 125 watt laser to it and then sand it down. I was pretty nervous as it was an eye-wateringly expensive part, but it had a happy ending. We used the EK Micro Torque fittings for the first and last time. Some of our compression rings were manufactured poorly and wouldn't fit on the EK branded tubing without scratching the heck out of it. For these, I designed and 3D printed a tool to help me sand them out, and then they had the expected fitment. The results were gorgeous. Eric did a lovely job with the extremely tight bends and next to zero wiggle room for the top runs. The system fills from a port at the top and a relief port in the back of the radiator, so filling and draining is very simple. Good thing too, because even though we thought it was leak tested, when I laid the system down on its side for shipping, I found a leak. I've been incorporating hardwoods into my design for a decade, and I knew I needed to continue the tradition with a piece of purple heart. It's finished with a special beeswax mix, which makes it look rich, deep, and natural. The rear you can see our GPU retention block system, which is cleaner and lower profile than a tab or flange, and much stronger. The vanity plate in the back covers the relief port and the radiator. To test the system, I actually gamed on it. Like, for real gamed on it. I spent a few days with the side panels off and took some measurements and then put the panels on and repeat the tests. I did notice a positive drop in temperature with the panels on, which was intended, but not taken for granted. I am so happy that the unique aspect of this chassis works, and I am left with a powerful system that looks cool with two fans. Well, it has three technically, because I didn't remove the power supply fan, but it does have an eco mode switch, which makes it nearly silent. At just under 25 liters, it sounds big, until you put it next to a normal ATX chassis. It's just so dense and makes perfect use of the interior space. Combined with the very high-end materials and water cooling components, it makes for a very heavy system. I love it, and with lessons learned from this build, I can't wait to build another. So if you like it, you know where to find me. And if you don't like it, let me know why in the comments below so I can improve. Special thanks to Eric for all his help and for driving 8 hours to help me finish the build. Thank you Lee Heat for the custom PCIe riser, 
and a very special thank you to Zometry for all the parts that you made for us. Please check out their website and see if their service works for you, and if it does, grab a coupon in the description below. Finally, thank you so much to my friends at Patreon who saved my bacon on this project. It took so much time and resources that there's no way I would have been able to build this rig for my friend Hexo if you didn't have my back. Hexo, I look forward to more wild adventures with you, buddy. I hope you love your new system, and maybe we can get some YouTube viewers to play with us. Classic hardcore World of Warcraft. I'd love to see you there. Alright everybody, peace. I need to wear my special edition NFC swag hat. I built the computer. I built a computer.